హలో సతోషం చక్రధారి భ్రమణ కుల భూషణ కు హమ్మతు పన్నవాసి నమస్తే ఆజ్ శని చర్వార్ జూన్ కి పాంచ తారీఖ ప్రాత క్లాస్ మే బాత్ దాదా కి మొళ్ళి సుంతే హే హలో నమస్తే ఫ్రమ్ అస్ రెసిడెన్స్ ఆఫ్ మధుబన్ టు ఆల్ ది జూల్స్ ఆఫ్ ది బ్రాహ్మణ్ క్లాన్ హూ ఆర్ స్పిన్నర్స్ ఆఫ్ ది డిస్కస్ ఆఫ్ సెల్ఫ్ రియలైజేషన్ Today is Saturday, the 5th of June, 1965, and the morning class are listening to Bhaktada's Morley. man your days of sorrow are about to end and the days of happiness the days filled with happiness are about to commence the light of the sun of fortune will return and the clouds of misfortune will dispel so have patience oh man Om Shanti Bajjani kya sunna Om Shanti What did the children hear? Baki kya sakya ne Bajjani kya sunna It's only the father that can ask this question What did the children hear? Sanyasi ne kya sakya Sanyasis couldn't ask this question Koi udasi ya koi bhi baat ne kya sakya hai loki No logic father or no scholar could ask this question. If par logic baat bachcho ko kehte hain ki wo atma mein hi man buddhi to kehte hain it's only the paralogic father the incorporeal father who can ask this question because the mind and intellect are located within the soul. and so he says now have patience ab jante hain bachche ki ye baat keh rahe hain ved ka and so now the children know that it's the father of the unlimited that is asking this sare duniya ko ye kehte hain dheere dharo bachche and he says to the whole world children have patience ab tumhare phir shanti aur sukh ke din aa rahe hain now once again your days of peace and happiness are coming aise janta hu sun ke hai sahi to samjhe ye nahi and so the children hear these things and as they hear these things they continue to understand them don't they usko us pe to nahi jayenge bahar mein nahi ha ye ho sakte hai ek din niklenge ye koi television television దుఖధామ <laughs> dukadham ke piche sukhadham to aata hi hai jo currently it is the land of sorrow and definitely after this will be the land of happiness sukhadham ki sthapana hai so to baap ye karenge the establishment of the land of happiness would only be carried out by the father aur baap hi ye tasalla dete hain bachcho ko dheere dete hain bachche dheere dharo pehle and so it's the father that says children keep patient he gives patience to all the children ye bachche 
और निश्चय होते हैं फिर ब्राह्मणों को जो ब्रह्मा मुख्य वंशावल बनते हैं and you have faith in this don't you children and who is it that would have faith in this it's those that become the mouth bone progeny of brahma the brahman ka se aaye se chalne itne brahma kumar aur kumariya and so where would so many brahmins come at this time all of these brahma kumars and kumaris ka se aaye kumar kumariya ka aarti hai bachche aur bachchiyan Where did they come from? The meaning of Kumar and Kumari is son and daughter. ये पत्थर बुद्धि है मनुष्य, वो ये समझ नहीं सकते, पूछते भी नहीं है बेटा. But the stone intellect people don't understand these things, and in fact, it doesn't even occur to them to ask about these things. इतने सभी जो कहते हैं ब्रह्मा कुमार और कुमारिया तो उनको बुद्धि में लगना चाहिए शास्त्र पढ़ने वालों को बरबर जरूर प्रजा पिता ब्रह्मा होगा जो इतने सब कहते हैं ब्रह्मा कुमार और कुमारी और एक के लिए ही सब एंड सो दोज दैट हैव रेड द स्क्रिप्चर्स व्हेन दे हियर द टर्म ब्रह्मा कुमार्स एंड कुमारीज इट शुड अकर टू देम टू आस्क दैट ऑल ऑफ दीस ब्रह्मा कुमार्स एंड कुमारीज must be children of prajapita brahma and that he must be there ek hi mat pita to tere ek ek ke hi to dharma aur dharma ya nahi hote hain na mat mat pita and everyone says that they just have this one mother and father usually all of these different people wouldn't have the same mother and father would they alag alag hote hain aur wo kuch jivan saavadi it would all be individual parents and all of them would also be giving birth through the womb ya ye sabhi ne brahman jo brahman the hi nahi tum log koi brahman ke nuk ke nahi the nahi jaise wo brahman hai ye zaat hai unke brahmano ki to wo hai kukh vansavali ki ye zaat ka ho ya kya ka ho aur jo mai and if you look so many of these brahmins weren't brahmins previously all of you that are here you weren't part of the brahmin caste before um, and that is known as the caste of brahmins that is born through the womb whereas you are the mouth born progeny of brahma those brahmins And so the father explains all these things, and he says that it's all an aspect of faith. In each aspect of this knowledge, you require to have a faithful intellect. The God has made this statement. Therefore, it is true that God did not say that God made this statement. Who is it that tells us these things? definitely a cycle ago god taught us these things bhagwan hi kehte hain samjhate hain ke barobar abhi ek abhi yukaan se la ladai samne khadi hai wohi maa bhai maa baat ki ladai hai the father comes and explains that this definitely is that same time period as before where there's all of this wars and the great mahabharat war standing in front of you All of these different armies of the Yadavas, the Kauravas, they're all here at the same time, and they're all brothers of each other. The meaning of the Yadav army are the residents of Europe who invent lots of different facilities and weapons. Bombs were erected. So it was Gaya who was there. and they invented all these bombs etc and this has been remembered in the scriptures in the buddhise ye musal niklenge that from their intellect missiles will emerge jo apne ko laga vinash karenge to likha and it's written that through this they will destroy their own clan aur barabar jante ho ko ko laga vinash karenge zarur देखा नहीं आता ये है कहते भी है तो एक को लगे 
And they will definitely destroy their own clan, they even say it themselves. They all belong to that same clan. They say to each other that we will destroy you. The other side will say, no, if you do that, we will destroy you back. And so they're in competition with each other. And so all of these things have been written. And these are old things, but they're not that old as in terms of being hundreds of thousands of years old. And so the father explains very clearly that children you understand, don't you, that you have to have patience now because Definitely, this is the old world which is now to finish. And it's only when this old world finishes that Bharat had become like this, the golden age. And this golden age can only occur when all of the numerous kingdoms, numerous devilish kingdoms, numerous old world aspects are finished and then it's possible to have the new. But that new world would be established prior to the destruction of the old, wouldn't it? And this is why it's been remembered that there's creation or establishment through Brahma. Then there is destruction through Shankar. When you explain, you shouldn't say that there's destruction first because, in fact, there is establishment first. And so you have to explain all these things because this is a difficult path because these things are new and so no one can understand them straight away. When people hear you, they query as to what you are and what you're speaking about. And they say that no one has consciously shared these things before. Where have they brought all these things from? Where, what is the basis of all of their knowledge? They just think that as other new paths are established, this Brahma Kumari's path is also one of those new age paths. Now that's not their fault, because it was the same a cycle ago as well. They kept putting obstacles because they didn't know what this was. But this is definitely the sacrificial fire of the knowledge of Rudra. Rudra is another name for Shiv. And this is known as the ancient easy Raj Yoga. And they don't understand the meaning of ancient either, do they, children? It's not that the father came and established all of this in the golden age. And 
This is in fact the confluence age. And so it's been remembered that I have to make the impure pure. And so the meeting of impure and pure is the confluence. Impure means the end of the Iron Age and pure means the beginning of the Golden Age. At the beginning of the Golden Age is the Deity Religion and here are the innumerable devilish religions. What is the devilish religion? Well, this is the kingdom of Ram, of Ravan, the kingdom of the devils. As you move forward, people will say themselves even more that this is the kingdom of devils. Various people do refer to it in this way already. And so in the scriptures they depict that there was a war between the deities and the devils. And so the father comes and explains that there are these two families remembered in the Mahabharat, the Kauravs and the Pandavas. The Kauravs are the community of devils and the Pandavas are the community of God. But they don't fight with each other. This is in fact a mistake. There's no fight that you are involved with, but there is the name of the Yavans mentioned. And so there is this battle commencing between the Muslims and those of the Congress party. For you brothers, how would you fight among each other? This is um, not possible and people even describe it as one side being the children of Dhritarashtra, the blind king, and on the other side the children of Yudhishthir, the one who is the king of righteousness. So they've made this sort of story which the father comes and explains the meaning of. And so it's been said that through Brahma he comes and he explains the essence of all of the Vedas and scriptures. He explains, doesn't he? all of these Vedas and Granths and scriptures and among them which should be called religious scriptures. And so the father has explained that there are four main religions. You understand, don't you children, there are four main religions. Among them, which is the first one? Well, it's the original eternal deity religion. And which is their religious scripture? Well, the jewel among all of the scriptures is the Gita. And this is because it's the first one and is so it is the highest, it is the jewel among all the scriptures.
अरे भाई वो किस धर्म का शास्त्र है भाई भारत का शास्त्र है अभी भारत and uh, which religion does this scripture belong to well it's a scripture of bharat shastra kiska us dharma se kya hua us dharma se aadi sanatan devi deta dharma ki sthapana hui and so whom does this scripture belong to and what was achieved through this scripture well the establishment of the original eternal deity religion occurs through this scripture सत्युग के आदि सनातन सूर्यवंशी चंद्रवंशी धर्मों की स्थापना हुई ठीक है दैट इज द ओरिजिनल इटर्नल डेटी रिलीजन ऑफ द गोल्डन एंड सिल्वर एज इज एस्टैब्लिश थ्रू दिस ओके तो संगम युग पर हुई होंगी एंड सो डेफिनेटली इट वुड हैव हैपेंड एट द कॉन्फ्लुएंस एज इट्स नॉट दैट सत्युग में हुई ना इट हैपेंड इन द गोल्डन एज नो इट हैपेंड एट द कॉन्फ्लुएंस दैट इज संगम युग कुंभ भी कहा जाते हैं इट्स ऑल्सो कोल्ड द कुंभ द मीटिंग अभी तुम जानते हो नहीं ये कुंभ का मेला है कौन यू नाउ नो दैट दिस इज द कुंभ मेला द ग्रेट फेयर ऑफ द मीटिंग कुंभ ये पानी और सागर का नहीं ज्ञान and what type of meeting is it it's not between the rivers and the ocean no this is the ocean of knowledge agyan sagar ke santan ke and he is meeting his children the children of the ocean of knowledge atmai aur parmatma bhai in kaam mein lag uske kaha jaate hain sangam that is the souls and the supreme soul and it's the meeting of them that is known as the confluence pavana sangam kalyankari sangam this is the purifying confluence the beneficial confluence to bar bar ye to zarur ho nahi hai kal se satyug to us kalyankari yug so bhi sangam yug kahenge and so this is definitely going to occur the golden age is going to come after the iron age and so this is why this is known as the beneficial confluence koi yuga ko kalyankari ke kahenge kyunki satyuga se treta aati hai to ganna padta hai do kala ho ko kalyankari thodi hua nahi the other confluences are not known as beneficial because when the golden age meets the silver age then one is falling by 2 degrees and so that's not beneficial is it kalyan ka hua phir chauda ka rasi chalo ni ye bhi to kalyan ka hua phir chal and then from 14 degrees one moves down to 12 degrees in the copper age and so that became a a confluence of lost isn't it jao sabhi kalyan ka hui akal and then you go forward and you keep falling and so all the ages are in fact ages of loss ko ta hi jaate hain acha phir kalyan chahiye to pura jab kalyan ho jaate hain sab aap aate hain phir sab ka kalyan and then one needs some level of benefit but that only occurs when there has been full loss when there is full loss or the word in hindi is akalyan which means unbenefit when there is full loss full unbenefit then the father the benefactor comes and brings about that benefaction that benefit karne to baaki bank mein samjhate hain bachchon ko ki bachche abhi tumhara kalyan ho raha hai and so it's the father himself that comes and sits and explains to the children the children now you are being uh, benefited hum na sukai jaate hain kalyanakari and so this is now known as beneficial ishas agri bhi naam diya hua hai bhai ye kalyanakari yug ye buddhi se kaam jo ko barobar bap aayega bhi kalyan karne so aayenge bhi to sangam mein yug par nahi and so if we use our intellect then it makes sense that this is the beneficial age the father comes to benefit everyone 
And so he would then come at this beneficial confluence age, wouldn't he? He wouldn't come in the golden age, would he? He is in fact the bestower of salvation for all. And so when it say all, then he has to come at a time when everyone is here. Not everyone's here in the copper age, are they? Not everyone's here in the silver age, are they? And not everyone is here in the golden age either, are they? But uh, everyone means to come at a time when all souls will be returning back home. And your hearing uh, that how the Father is giving us patience, and we also know ourselves. And so, although we know, we say to the Father that it will be good if everything hurries up, because there's a great deal of complications and sorrow in this world. And the Father says that no children, everything happens according to its own time, because this is a drama. Everyone has to study fully, everyone has to then carry on changing themselves so that they reach a point where they are like a flower once again. You're now changing at the present time from a thorn into a flower. So no one's going to instantly become a flower from a thorn, are they children? No. Those that are corrupted, they're not going to instantly become those who are elevated? No. But yes, we all have to put the effort of all ten fingernails into the efforts that we make. And so no one can become it instantly. Although we do say that you can claim liberation and life within a second, and that's okay, but what that means is that one recognizes the Father and claims a right to the inheritance in that moment. So we became the those with the right to the inheritance, and the inheritance is fine. You definitely are those who are going to go to the pure world. Uh, all of those that come to Baba. However, there's also the question of the status there. And for that, effort is required. And so within a study, one makes effort, don't they, children? And so you have to study. It's not that you can instantly attain the karmatit stage. If you did attain the karmatit stage instantly, then you'd have to leave your body as well. But um, the law doesn't say that you will instantly attain your karmatit stage. You've uh, got to engage within a very big battle with Maya. And the thing about a battle, the thing about a war, is that it's never over very quickly. 
Some wars can last for decades, 60 years or so. Some wars they last 15, 20 years. And your battle is with Maya, so it takes time. For as long as the father is here, your battle with Maya will continue, and then at the end, the result will be published. How much did each one attain victory over Maya? Did they reach their karmatite stage? And so now the father says, remember your father and remember your home. Your home means the land of peace, the incorporeal world. That's known as your home, isn't it, child? Don't um, think that the golden age is called the land of silence. No, not at all. Silence means nirvan, the stage beyond sound. When there's no body and it's just the soul, then the soul can't speak without a body. And so true silence is known as the land of silence. The land of silence, the land of nirvana, the land of retirement, the land beyond sound. And that is our home. And you have happiness for those of you that have the faith that that definitely is our home. And we're about to go there because this is in the drama. Silence movie talking. And you have the entire drama from the beginning to the end in your intellect, so you have how that happiness. And you're aware of who is the highest and high father. And then the next level down, you've got the Trimurti. And as Baba says, you move from silence right down into Toki. <laughs> It's known as the soul world, the subtle region, and this physical world. And these things aren't in anyone else's intellect, not at all. These things are in your children's intellect. It's not that those that have read a lot of scriptures know these things. Look, Baba himself had read so many scriptures, but he didn't have any of these things in his intellect. Um, it was like being a little baby who listens to lots of things but doesn't really know the meaning of it. For example, he used to hear the Gita and there would be phrases like that who do we give the fruit of to the Gita, who do we thank for the Gita, and so then he would think, well, praise to Krishna and then would give some sort of donation or contribution to Krishna. <laughs> But those are things that everyone does, and everyone does an awful lot of that in the path of bhakti. 
कहीं कोई ये थोड़ी रहता है कि भगवत बुद्धि में आया हाँ हम दूर देश में रहने वाले हैं that it didn't come in one's intellect that I was from that far away land. That the father lives up there. All of these things were understood later when the father came. It doesn't come in anyone's intellect and no one says that our Baba, the one who lives in the faraway land, lives up there in the soul world. And that the father would come down here. Our Baba, the one who gives everyone happiness, would come down here. It's now that you who refer to him in this way. Because he's now come, the one that everyone is looking for, in order to make the impure ones pure. And everyone calls out the pure, hey purifier, come. And no one has become pure from impure, so no one could return back home up until now. Um, it becomes like that maze in Lucknow. And what was it called in English? The maze. And this is like where you go into the middle of it and then you're constantly looking for a way out. But you can never find a way out of this. And so we used to go and you try and exit through one place and you find that's a dead end, then you go back and you go try another path and that's a dead end. And you do this all day and you just end up getting tired. And so you end up just looking for a guide. And so this is what we do with all the scriptures as well. We're looking for someone to explain these things to us. But wherever we go, we're always led in a wrong direction. Wherever you go, whether you go to a sacrificial fire, whether you go to the sages and holy men, no one really has any clear paths, and so you don't know where you're going. And so the father comes and explains that all of these things are nonsense, where they claim that a soul merged back into the light, that Buddha went back and merged back into the Buddha, None of these things have happened. That someone has become merged within the element of Brahm. They keep speaking about this nonsense, but the father comes and explains that no one can go back. When this drama is to end, then all the actors, including the creator and the director, all come onto the stage. In the old days when there were plays, um, these things like the bioscope, they've come along later. All the actors in the play used to come in their costumes at the end and then come onto the stage together. And then they would go off stage 
remove their clothes, and then all go home. And so they would then come back the next day, put their costumes back on, and perform the same play. So that's a question of a limited play. And the father comes here, sits and explains that this is an unlimited play. And so who is it that made all of this? Well, human beings have all of these types of egos where they think that I am the king of such and such a place, I am such and such. But in fact, they are souls. And so all of this is a question of being soul conscious now, isn't it? But it's actually the soul that leaves one dress and takes on another dress. And oh, ho, oh, we've all taken 84 births, all these different names and forms. And so you children know this, don't you, that we've taken 84 different names and forms, and so we left one, then we took another one, then we took a third. And when a body became old, we'd have the thought that it's now time to go until the next. But now the whole world has become old and decayed. And so now the play is going to repeat. And so the history of the world, the happiness of the world is going to come back again. And so you children know that the history and geography of the land of happiness, of heaven, is now going to repeat again. And so it's now in your intellect as to when your role is now to finish, that it's now time for us to remember our Baba. And so the Father says that I've given you an order, I've issued an ordinance, it's nothing small. He is the purifier, and so what does he tell us to do? So the father says that I give you a very easy method. Um, I know that you're all tired, and so I don't give you anything else. But I just say that as you walk and move around, keep in your intellect that this play is about to finish and that I am an actor. I'm sure I part and I finished my 84 parts. Bye -bye. I'm good. The father has now come and he's making us beautiful again. In order to make us deities again. To make us pure from impure. And it's you children that know that the purifier has definitely come to make us pure from impure. Just as he did in the previous cycle. And we have become impure from pure innumerable times. And we will become this innumerable times in the future.
है नहीं ठीक है नहीं इससे ज्यादा फिर करेंगे तो पहले फिर देवी देवता धर्म के आएंगे And so this is right, isn't it, children? That as the history and geography spins, then the deity religion will come first again. Do some of you know that? Is that fair, my children? And not everyone can come there, can they, children? Settling is not easy. Now, if you want to know, it's a settling. But you, there is a sapling being planted. You children now know that a sapling is being planted. So. जंगल की सेटलिंग लगाते रहते हैं दे कीप प्लांटिंग जंगल ट्रीज की सेरेमनी करते अब यहां दे कीप हैविंग सेरेमनीज फॉर दैट क्या सेरेमनी करें गुप्त वेस में है अब जानते हैं नॉलेज बट व्हाट सेरेमनी वुड वी हैव हियर वी आर इन आवर इनकॉग्निटो फॉर्म्स एंड वी आर नॉट परफॉर्मिंग एनी सेरेमनीज बट वी नो इंटरनली There's no need for a ceremony because we have the internal happiness. But over our holy devi devata dharma ke jhar ke jo patte hai, jo pray dharma se bhrist ho gaya hai, karma se bhrist ho gaya hai, abhi to karma dharma se bhrist ho gaya nahi. That definitely, our deity religion that had become corrupted. in its actions that definitely it's the deity religion whose religion and karma became corrupted so the kind of ke bharat vasi jo karma shrest dharma shrest the kal bhi shrest tha kabhi bhi koi paap nahi karte the that it would definitely be said that the people of bharat who had an elevated religion and performed elevated karma that definitely they had elevated karma that is they didn't perform any sinful actions punya atmao ki duniya thi papao this was the land of charitable souls where there was no sin ye nahi hai jo aram aaj hai nahi bilkul hi because there was no kingdom of ravan there ab aise honge to kya hote hai karma akarm ho jate hai and so what occurs the karma becomes neutral samjhane ki wo samjh raha hai fir devlava raha hai understand don't you because you're getting your inheritance there and then later the kingdom of ravan begins then the karma wo vikalp hone shuru kar ho jata hai and so then karma begin to become sinful karma the sanshane uthte hain to wo koi karma vikalp ho nahi sakenge and then there's no doubt that there can be any karma that aren't sinful actions there wah koi pat to ho hi nahi sakenge in the golden age there can be no one to perform sinful karma because there cannot be anyone who is impure there krishna chari ho hi nahi sakte hai it's not possible for there to be anyone corrupted there कि तुम जानते हो योग बल्ल से तुम विश्व के मार्ग बनते हो बिकॉज़ यू नो दैट थ्रू द पावर ऑफ योग यू बिकम द मास्टर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पर अब विश्व का मालिक तो कोई बाउंडर से बाउंडर से कभी भी नहीं बन सकते हैं इन फैक्ट नो वन कैन बिकम द मास्टर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड थ्रू फिजिकल पावर तो ये तो बच्चे जानते हैं कि जो दोनों है मुसलधार वाले ये अगर आपस में मिल जाए जोड़ी तो विश्व का मान भी बन सकते हैं यू नो दैट इफ दोस टू साइड्स यू हैव ऑल ऑफ द मिसाइल्स जॉइंड अप एंड बिकेम वन टीम देन दे कुड रूल द होल वर्ल्ड और जो नहीं ये तो गाय में गाया हुआ है भाई जो बंदर लाते हैं बिल्ला मक्खन खा जाते हैं बट नो It's been remembered that two monkeys fight with each other and the cat comes in the middle and eats the butter. And they show this butter in Sri Krishna's mouth. And so they also show that his mother had a vision because when she asked him to open his mouth to prove that he didn't have butter in it 
she had a vision of the full moon. And so many here used to have visions, many still have visions, and many will have visions in the future. And so the meaning of Bata is that he gets the kingdom of the world in his hand. And so it's been shown that the two of them will fight with each other. And so definitely these two will fight with each other and Bharat will attain its kingdom. And so there are two wars that will occur. One is between the Kauravs and the Yavans, and the other is this one. And so these two wars are occurring at this time. And so it comes in the news that in such and such a place there were communal clashes. And they have lists of how many died on each side. And so you have to understand that there will definitely be clashes. There will always be 10 or 20 killed here and there. And it's because there are so many in the Iron Age. In the Golden Age, there are then so few. And so there are so few there, so they won't fight with each other. But here you look, I mean, the Muslims weren't even there initially. It was just the original eternal one deity religion. But then where did the kingdom of all these different religions come from then? Uh, you, for example, look at the Christian religion. Who invented that religion? Who then helped them to become their attain their kingdom, who made all these inventions so that they became so powerful. But there wasn't the kingdom of the Muslims here previously either. All of this coming and going commenced with Mahmud of Ghaznavi. Otherwise, their boundary is quite far from here. He came from Ghaznavi, which is in Afghanistan. But he made inroads here. And why did he keep coming? Because India continued to become weak. And so they continue to take and take and eventually claim the kingdom over the whole nation. They claim the entire kingdom. The Christians, uh, they managed to take the whole of Bharat in their kingdom whereas the Muslims were not able to take all of it. These Christians are very powerful and they managed to take over the whole of Bharat. They even managed to take over China and previously uh, the Americans were also ruling over China. Uh, 
It's only recently that they've granted independence everywhere. And so these are enemies. I mean, who is it that has invaded Bharat? And so this is an incognito matter, isn't it? That who is it that's invaded us? Who attacked Bharat and ruled over her? In fact, it was Ravan who wanted to make this place into hell. Now you know these things, but are all these things, are any of these things written in the scriptures? None of these things are written in there, but it's the father that comes and explains that for half a cycle, Ravan has been your enemy. You have been attaining sorrow from the beginning through the middle till the end. And this is why the sannyasis say there's no such thing as happiness here. It's like the droppings of a crow. They're in the household anyway. That's what they say, isn't it, children? And their followers are people who live in families. Uh, but they've renounced that because they regard the happiness of the household path as being like the droppings of a crow. Now they don't know that in the golden age there's nothing but happiness. Everyone has happiness there. So who's going to say there that Living within a family is like the happiness of the droppings of a crow. And so you have the contrast between the happiness of the droppings of a crow in this land of sorrow and there where in the land of happiness where there is just constant happiness. Now, the people of Bharat do know about heaven because whenever someone dies, they always say he's gone to heaven. So there's so much praise of heaven. Where did they go? Oh, he went to the land of Vishnu. Left for heavenly abode. Where did he go? He left for the heavenly abode. So they say this, don't they? So then that means that this is hell, isn't it? But if you say to them that you're residents of hell, they begin insulting you. It's a wonderful aspect, isn't it? That they say that he's gone to heaven. So then that makes them residents of hell, doesn't it? And if he went to heaven, then, I mean, what you can't even imagine, you can't even speak about what riches he would have gained there. So then why do you call him back into the trance messenger and feed him items from that poor person, items from hell? It's because they don't really have faith that he's gone to heaven. But we then they feed things of the Iron Age to them. And so here, some of the daughters who go into trance have seen 
heaven and know the contrast between heaven and hell. Uh, they've seen all of the different items there in the golden age, how wonderful they are, how you have such large flowers and other such items. And so even such a simple thing doesn't come into the understanding of people. They keep saying that such and such a person went to heaven, but heaven means the golden age. At least accept that you are a resident of hell. When you leave the body, everyone's going to say you've gone to heaven. So that means that you're now in hell. And what type of hell is this? This is the extreme depth of hell. That means extreme hell. It's given a very bad name. In the scriptures, they depict it as like these very uh, appalling rivers in this hell where all sorts of creatures bite you as you go down in your boat through these rivers of hell. And so this is what this world is really like now, isn't it? And then upon this, um, the people of Bharat even play a song which comes on the radio sometimes. You um, must have heard the song about how people behave now. It's a very sad warning song as to the condition of Bharat now. Yes, that's right. The title of the song is What's Happened to People Nowadays? And so they say that what's happened to people nowadays and particularly in Bharat now in fact people everywhere are good but why particular Bharat? It's because it really was the best and now it's become the worst. At this time it's not good at this time anymore. It was good, but it's not good anymore. And so it's understanding that it will be again and accepting that, um, that we, aren't, we were part of the devilish community, we ourselves. We're part of that community. It's not that we weren't. But the Father came and is now making us part of the community of deities. And which Baba is it that makes us this? It is the Father. And this is not a new thing because every cycle he does this. At every confluence of every cycle, we claim our inheritance from the Father. Now you understand, don't you, that for half a cycle, we claim our inheritance, and then after half a cycle, we are cursed by Ravan. And so the father is the one who gives the blessing, the inheritance, and then Maya comes and gives us a curse. 
Look, it's half and half. And so seeing this, even the father says that, Oh Maya, you are so powerful. You're even able to make those that I call the great Maharatis in this army fall. You even defeat them. You are so strong. And so it's really like that. You see it yourself, don't you? That there are those children who are known as Mahavirs, the great warriors. And then the next day, Maya hits them so hard that they fall. Um, it's a battle, isn't it? You've seen boxing, haven't you? And so you haven't seen it? Yes, you've seen it. So in they don't have... Um, too much worry for their life and so what they're doing is they're fighting with each other in this way. And so what happens is in order to fight with each other they get a lot of money. Uh, they might even get something like 200,000 each for the fight for with each other. Not the um, lesser ones, but those who are the top fighters. And some of them, they get hit and beaten up very badly, then they recover and they return back to that and then they fight again. Because that's their job. It's known as their profession. These are professional fighters. And like even those that play football, they are known as professionals. They learn to do it in a particular way. And they get a big return for what they do. So now, what's your profession? What is it that the father comes and teaches you? Hey children, you have to beat Maya. You Shaktis, you powers, you goddesses, even your name is the army of Shiv Shaktis. And within this army there's males and females. You have to have yoga with Shiv, draw power, Shakti, into yourself. And then who do you have to beat? You have to beat Maya. Look, the Father enables all of you to beat Maya and liberates you. Look, uh, his praise is so great. He is the liberator. And the liberator of who? He works with those whose name has been remembered as the army of Shiv Shaktis. Look, um, Baba's made the mothers elevated here. In fact, in this army there are both brothers and sisters. And so this is the Shiv Shakti army and it's been remembered as praise to the mothers. Who 
That's right, isn't it, children? And who is it that says this? It's the Father who's come and said this. Praise to the mothers. Why? Because you sacrifice yourself unto me, and I sacrifice myself unto you. So you say to me, praise to Shiva, and I say to you, praise to the Shaktis. This is how praise is given, isn't it? And okay, this one is also with us because this is the family path. And so the father becomes happy when he sees that this particular child is moving along very in a very accurate and alert way. No matter how many storms come to him, he just doesn't shake. And so Baba gives the example that there was Hanuman and no one from Ravan's army could shake him. He is just like all of you. And this is actually a memorial of when you, of you at the end. And so this whole story of how Sita was stolen and then there was big fire everywhere in Lanka, all of these things are to do with right at the end. And this story was told where um, Ravan wasn't able to shake the foot of Angat. And so this stage is going to come at the end for you. And so a fire is going to start in the world and things are going to be finished. And so at that time, you should have this stage of a great deal of happiness because this entire distraction is happening for you. And so this world has to be purified. And only when this earth is purified and receives all of the compost of all of these bodies can then the pure deities take step here because impure because pure deities can't take step in this impure land all of these five elements are impure at this time and so everyone knows that you can definitely say that the deities cannot come into this old world. They will come into the new world and this old world is to be now finished. The haystack is going to be set ablaze. And the festival of Holi, they put a thread through the chapati and then they burn the chapati in the fire and the only thing that remains is the thread. And so this body is going to be burnt away and the soul, the thread will remain. And so you'll see how many bodies are going to be burnt, finished. And 
And so everyone will settle their karmic accounts and fly up above like a swarm of mosquitoes. And so when these big wars have taken place, how many must have died just like mosquitoes? In the great war that occurred, there were tens of millions who died. In this war that just occurred, there were tens of millions. It wasn't just a few, but it was tens of millions dying. And they died from all the countries, Germany, China, Japan, wherever they were from. Do you think people from Paris didn't die in that war? They'd also gone to fight in that um, in that uh, battlefield, and so they also died. Many had gone from here to help out there, so tens of millions died. But there were probably even more that died, but they don't show uh, too much of these things here. Now think about it. How many is, a te is 10 million? So think how many people that is. And so it's been remembered that when Ram goes, then Ravan also goes. And so, look, that's going to be the kingdom of Ram, and this is currently the kingdom of Ravan. There's the godly community there, and this side is the devilish community. And so we have to go back home, don't we? And then we have to come again into the new world. There is only going to be a few there. It'll be a small garden. And so these are things to be understood and they're things to have faith in. And so it's faith that it's only the Father that can explain all these things. It's faith that only the Father is the bestower of salvation for all. It's faith that only the Father is the death of all deaths and that he will give death to everyone in such a way that all will fly up like a swarm of mosquitoes and go back home. He is the purifier and so he's doing a good thing of making everyone pure and taking them back home. And so we weren't able to meet him. We did bhakti for half a cycle in order to try and meet him and we weren't able to. And so this is now known as the fruit of bhakti that you're receiving now. You understand? But bhakti definitely has to happen. Bhakti means moving away from your true self. And it's amazing how through bhakti you moved away from yourself, but it's through that it's in that state of having moved away from your true self that you then get the fruit of being able to return back to your true self, to your true salvation. And 
And so he explains these things so well. And he also says to the children that you can also explain these things to others in this way. But remember, only a few out of multi-millions will listen to this, and even then only a handful of the few will understand. Some children say that at the exhibition 20,000 came to look. But then children out of that only two to four will actually come and listen to this knowledge and take it on board. But all the others, they can still become subjects and there'll be many subjects created. But if even out of all of them, one or two emerge with a faithful intellect who are going to race ahead in yoga, consider that to be great fortune. And even those that do manage to take this up after a little while, as they move along, Maya can hit them in such a way that actually they're not also able to continue. So look how clearly Baba explains everything. So anyone new who comes here, they won't be able to understand anything. That's right, isn't it, children? Because this is a university. If any uneducated person comes to a university, then what would they understand? If the principal saw them, then they would say that, what are they doing here? How could they possibly understand anything? And so this is why they're never allowed in there. If someone goes into a college or a university and says, we've just come to see what it's like, then they might show them the rooms. But it's not as if they'll be able to attend the classes each day. And so no matter how much you explain to people after seven days, eight days, ten days, they get a slap from Maya and they go back to the way they were. They even understand that this is the Godfatherly College. We are the students of the Godfatherly College that makes us Godfatherly students. And what are we studying? We are studying to become gods and goddesses. And the deities are called gods and goddesses. And then what happens? In one slap, Maya takes them out of the list of becoming gods and goddesses. Just by one slap. Okay, so children, who can guarantee that they'll never cry in anything? So who will say that they will never let tears fall, they'll remain constantly cheerful, because children, we've received the father of the unlimited, we're never going to receive such a father again, are we?
We're going to receive the inheritance from him in the golden age, we have no doubt about that, because there's no one else that we can receive that from. So when you've received such a father who's making you into the master of the world, surely there's no need to cry about anything. So if the bride finds her bridegroom, then that would be amazing, wouldn't it? But if you cry, then everyone's going to understand that you've become a widow. It's widows who cry, isn't it? You've seen that sort of thing, haven't you, children? Every 12 months on the anniversary, they make sure that that widow is crying. And so, um, this is that spiritual husband, and so what the father is doing now is making everyone laugh in order to make them strong. And so the father is seeing that many of you have the habit of crying, and so he's trying to instill it within you not to cry. But the children say that they forget, and if they forget, then all of the troubles begin. And Baba understands that it's a destination to reach that stage. However, he still pushes you there. And so he asks all of you that is there anyone who can guarantee that from now they won't cry again? Okay, Otherwise, they'll be given the title of being a widow. There's many Brahmins, many such sisters like this in Delhi. So when, what I want you to do is to check up on each other and if you see anyone crying, come and tell Baba about it. <laughs> the one that you've been remembering for half a cycle, he now comes and he gives you self-sovereignty for 21 births. What else do you want? There's a song, isn't there, that when you attain that one, then what else do you want? There's nothing difficult in any of this. So in order to make you make effort, Baba keeps giving you courage. So no one should, um, can be cry now, no one should be crying. Even when um, men go there and die, if someone leaves the body, what, what is it that they say? What's the phrase that they use? They, um, they show it, uh, they have to show some sort of tears that um, they are sorrowful that the other person has died in those circumstances. They have to demonstrate that they love them. There was, um, when Baba was younger, uh, one of his aunties had died and so his father kept saying to him that you should be like this, you should be like that. So he's talking about crocodile tears. And 
And so his father was telling him that what you have to say is that it was God's will, it was destiny that this happened, and then say all those things, and then also make sure you cry a few tears. <laughs> And so I asked him that, well, I always remain really happy, so what, what should I do if no tears fall? <laughs> and so he said, uh, from the outside, make sure that you cry, and if you have to put something in your eye to make sure tears fall, then do that. <laughs> And so then everyone will see that, oh, you definitely care. <laughs> and uh, so I did try all of those things and still I couldn't get any tears to fall. So then what could I do? <laughs> and so I put all these things in my eyes to try and make some tears fall and I said to him that I just can't get any tears to fall and I don't like putting this stuff in there. So to the sweetest, now think who's saying this. So to the sweetest and then the most beloved. After 5,000 years. You've come to meet once again, and what's the meaning of once again? That you'll keep meeting again and again. This cycle keeps repeating, and the meaning of repeat is that it keeps on happening again and again. It'll be golden, silver, copper, iron age, confluence age, then again golden, silver, copper, iron age, and then confluence age again. There is no other world. God is one, and the creation is one. There's no question of there being worlds up in the stars. If God is one, the creation be heaven. If God is one, then there is one creation. But what is certain is that he comes and gives the inheritance of peace to the whole of his creation. You understand, don't you? Because that's his job every cycle. And who is it that gives sorrow? Well, that's the kingdom of Ravan. And they burn him in effigy of Ravan in Bharat. They don't burn him in any other land, do they? They don't burn him in other lands because he's here. And the story of the sorrow is based upon this land. Will they burn an effigy of Ravan in the Golden Age? Nope, he's going to be finished now. So why would we remember him afterwards? That's the kingdom of Ram. So where would Ravan come in that? And it does, still doesn't enter anyone's intellect that this is definitely now the kingdom of Ravan. They keep um, celebrating the burning of the effigy of Ravan every year and year by year they keep doing it and it still doesn't occur to anyone that this is the kingdom of Ravan. They just carry on year on year doing it. Holy, 
In fact, all of these festivals only occur once in the cycle, but people end up celebrating them yearly. Like Holi, it only happens once in the cycle, but actually then they celebrate it every year. Shiv Jenti only happens once in the cycle, but it's celebrated annually. Whatever there is from here, they then um, remember it and celebrate that festival yearly on the path of Bhakti. Here it only happens once, doesn't it? For example, look at the festival of Holika. That means that the haystack gets set ablaze. That only happens once. But they keep celebrating it yearly. That um, many things happen like that. That's, for example, the festival of Rakshabandhan, the tying of the sacred thread of protection. You only do that once now, but then they celebrate that yearly. You make that protection of how of purity once, but then they do that yearly. So most of the things that are celebrated yearly on the path of bhakti occur once now at this confluence age. Okay, so to the sweetest beloved, Father who's come after 5,000 years, the one who gives unlimited happiness. That unlimited happiness can only be attained from that mother and father to whom we were calling. Now we're getting that happiness for half a cycle, and so we'll be quiet about it. But then afterwards we'll keep celebrating that year after year. So Shiv Jayanti is now, isn't it, where you've got your mother and father. From whom you gain your inheritance, but people don't even know what Shiv Jayanti is. Why they celebrate it, how they celebrate it. They don't know anything. And that will be repeated again. You've seen, haven't you, children, that anything that happens on the path of bhakti is repeated again. Whatever we did in the Golden Age Kingdom, we will repeat that again as well. So we're all tied within this. It's already made, isn't it, children? And so in English, it's said that it's the preordained, imperishable world drama. One drama. Drama is like one. It's one drama. They don't say all drama. It's one. And now you children know about these things. They don't understand any of these things. In other religious gatherings, people don't play these types of songs. So to the sweetest beloved, long lost and now found children, love and remembrances from the mother and father and good morning.